We are learning how to simplify radical expressions and we did it the last time with numbers and now we're going to do it with variables. So I want to make sure everybody understands the concept that not every root is going to break down nicely. If you have perfect squares or perfect cubes, yes, you could square root or cube root them nicely. But that's not always the case. So if you look at your notes, today we're going to be discussing doing square roots and cube roots of both numbers and variables. And just like with numbers, not every square root of a variable is going to work out nicely. So we have to go back over definitions. So we're going to look through some of these examples that are in your notes. So if we go to the board, I want to do today the square root of x cubed. Well, we got to go back to our definition. What does square root mean? It means something times itself. Is there two of the same thing you could multiply to make an x cubed? No, there's not. The only way to multiply to make x cubed is you need an x squared and an x, and they're not the same. So that wouldn't fit the definition. Okay? If you remember, we learned a trick. To square root a variable, what are you supposed to do with the exponent? You're supposed to divide it into 2. So, we already learned this. If I wrote the square root of x squared, we know the answer to this. What times itself is x squared? We know that's x. Because you could take 2 and divide it by 2, and you would get 1 with no remainder. We're going to do the same rule here. The rule of square rooting a variable is still divide the exponent by 2, but now you're going to have a remainder. And let me show you why. x cubed, we all know, means x times x times x. Square root, root, square root means making groups of 2, multiplying the same thing. If you look with x cubed, you get one group of 2. And then you have one left over. And that's what the answer would be. You would say, okay, there's a group or two. This is x times x, which is x squared. What is the square root of x squared? x. This x doesn't have anybody to group with. So he can't square root. He stays inside. So what we're going to do is the same rule. To square root a variable, you divide this exponent by 2. How many times can you divide 3 by 2? Well, 2 goes into 3 once. There's that 1 with the remainder of 1, and there's the remainder. So that's all you got to do in your head, is you're going to divide the exponent by 2, that's going to go on the outside, and whatever's left over is going to stay on the inside. Now do we write exponents of 1? No, so we write x square root x. Okay, look at this example. I want to square root 9 x to the ninth. How is this connected? Multiplication. So technically I'm asking you to do two things. I'm asking you to square root 9 and then square root a variable. All right, let's do the number. Do we have any work here? What times itself is 9? Because 9 is a perfect square, it's on the list. We know that answer is 3. We're done. Now I'm going to square root a variable. Square root means making groups of 2. Divide that exponent by 2. If you take 9 and divide it by 2, what do you get? You get 4 with a remainder of 1. So on the outside, we go x to the 4th. If you think about x to the 9 visually, that's what you're thinking of. You have 9 x's. Square root means making groups of 2. That makes 1, 2, 3, 4 groups of 2. So that's what you're saying. If I have 9 of something and I make groups of 2, I'd have 4 groups of 2 and that one left over. The remainder stays on the inside. So that answer would be 3x to the 4th square root x. So there's no need to do this work here. You just got to learn how to divide in your head. Okay. Our next example. I have 18x to the fifth y. Again, that's all connected by multiplication. So I'm asking you to square root three things. I'm asking you to square root 18, x to the fifth, and y. So from our last lesson, is 18 a perfect square? Is there a number times itself that's 18? No, there's not. So what is the bi biggest perfect square that divides into 18? You're right. That's 9 times 2. So we would say this is the square root of 9 and the square root of 2. We all know what's the square root of 9. That's 3. Can we square root 2? No, we can never square root 2. That's in lowest terms. 
So that's say square root 2. Now we're going to do the variables. To do square roots of variables, it's a totally different rule. To square root a variable, you divide the exponent by 2. How many groups of 2 can you get out of x to the fifth? Well, 5 divided by 2 is 2 with a remainder of 1. So we would say, okay, you would get two groups of 2, that's x squared, and have one left over. And the one left over would stay inside. If you wanted to draw it out, I have no problem with you drawing out five x's and then grouping them in twos. There's the two groups, there's the one left over. Then we got to square root y. But how many y's are in here? There's just one. If you have one y, can you make a group of two? No. Can you ever square root just the letter y or the letter x or the letter z? No. So because you can't square root it because it's not a group of two, you can't divide one by two and get a whole number. He stays inside. Now the problem is you can't leave this as the answer. This is all connected by multiplication. So what's on the outside? The 3 and the x squared gets written first. And then having these three different symbols, we need 1. So 2 times x times y is 2xy. And that is how you reduce a root that is not perfect. All right, if you could do it with square roots, you could also do it with cube roots. Okay, so you've got to know your rules. We said, previous lesson, to cube root a variable, you divide this exponent by 3 because you're making groups of 3. So again, if I work this out, if I want you to do the cube root of x to the 5th, I can work it out. I can say, okay, there's 5x's in here. That's what x to the 5th means. Cube rooting means I want to make groups of 3. Well, if you look, I made one group of 3. So 1x would come out. What's left inside of these two x's? They don't have a group of 3. Well, how do you write x times x? You write it as x squared. So the cube root of x to the fifth would be an x cube root x squared. Don't forget to write the index. I have to mark you wrong. Now, there is a way to do this in your head and not do this work. If you just follow the rule. When you cube root a variable, you take your exponent and you divide it by 3. How many times does 3 go into 5? Once with a remainder of 2. There's the 1. There's the 1x. There's the remainder of 2. So you can look at this and get this answer just in your head. So now let's look at our last example in this section. I want you to cube root 8x cubed y to the 8z. I'm asking you to do four cube roots. I'm asking you to cube root 8 a number, cube root x cubed, cube root y to the 8th, and cube root z. That's really what I'm asking you to do. So we'll first start with the number. Now, in order to cube root a number, you've got to know your perfect cubes. Is 8 a perfect cube? Sure it is. What do you multiply 3 times to give you 8? 2. You just know that off the top of your head. So it's a perfect cube, you know the answer. Now we're going to cube root variables. The rule is to cube root a variable, you take the exponent and then divide it by what? 3. So there's a 3. What's 3 divided by 3? x to the first. Now, we're going to take 3 and divide it into 8. How many 3's would go into 8? That would be 2. So 3 goes into 8 twice, that would be 2, with a remainder of how many? 2. If you don't believe me, we could work it out. If you write up here 8 y's, and I'm asking you to cube root 8 y's, I'm asking you to make groups of 3. One group of 3, two groups of 3. Two left over would add a buddy. Okay? Then I'm asking you to cube root z. How many z's is this? There's only one. Can you make a group of three if you only have one? No. So you can't cube root the letter z, so he stays inside also. Now, that can't be the final answer. You write what's on the outside together. So you have a two, you have an x to the first, which is just x, and you have a y squared. Then inside, in the cube root symbol, you have a y squared and a z. That is all connected by multiplication. So the moral of the story is still the same, but we've been talking about this whole module. To square root and cube root numbers, you look at your list of perfect squares and perfect cubes. To square root variables, you divide the exponent by 2. To cube root variables, you divide the exponent by 3. 
just realize sometimes it's not going to divide evenly. You'll have a remainder, and that's the part, the term that stays inside the root symbol. Okay, next video coming up is doing operations. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. See you later.